creatives and welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to explore the brand new Illustrator on the iPad. We're going to see is it actually worth it? If any of you attended Adobe Max this year, it was available for free and if you had a CC account, it was for free. So they launched it at the beginning of Adobe Max and we're going to dive right into it. All right. I have your basic Apple Pencil and I also have a seventh generation regular iPad. So let's see how this works out. So as you can see on my first artboard, let's go ahead and start with these two things. I created a maple leaf and I created a pumpkin. So first thing we're gonna start with is, let's start with the maple leaf. One thing that I thought was very fascinating is you can work with this program with the Apple Pencil or if you don't have an Apple Pencil, that's totally fine. You can just use your fingers. I mean, it's an iPad. Go ahead and apply a gradient because this already has a fill color. You can activate them by clicking the fill and stroke that are over here on the left toolbar. There's also a whole bunch of tools on the right side toolbar as well. We'll get to those. You can choose whatever color you want. And I chose a nice fall yellow. Up here at the top, it says solid color or gradient. You also have a color wheel and everything else, hex code, what have you. If you wanna be very particular and put in hex codes of certain colors that you like, you can do that. Very simple to create a new swatch. Under swatches, see the plus sign? Just tap that, it creates a new swatch for you. Let's go under gradient. I want to do a, let's do a radial gradient. Whoa, <laughs> let me pull this out over here so you can see two finger pinch and move go moves the artboard moves your artwork let's choose the outer color as our yellow let's choose the inner color as a darker yellow let's move it a little bit more towards orange there we go so now we have a nice gradient you can even move this up and down i'm just going to move this in slightly there we go it's very, very simple to create gradients. So curious as to how I made the maple leaf, all I did was take the shape tool over here, tap it twice, and you have a star tool. And I just took the star tool and modified it using the pen tool and the direct selection tool. Your pen tool is the third one here on the left toolbar. And then above that is a, it's kind of like a white direct selection tool. And above that is your direct selection tool. Those are the main ones here on the left. Also underneath this shape tool, you also have your text tool, type tool, and then the artboard and the little photo over here right above this fill and stroke is your import option. We are going to move over here to our little pumpkin. Our pumpkin is cute, but he has a little bit of problems. So we'll start with a gradient. Click on that color over there a linear gradient. Now I want this angle to move up here and this to move down here. I already have pre-selected colors. And then this color down here, I want it to be darker. So I'm just gonna pull that down darker, pull this in, and then you can swap the angles as much as you'd like to and move your little slider in the middle here. Be very careful and precise with your selections with the Apple Pencil. You can always press the undo up here at the top right corner in case you mess up. We all mess up, it happens. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that. Now our pumpkin is looking pretty good, but there's something going on with his mouth. It's quite rounded and I want it all sharp because he is pumpkin, he's a little bit of a scary pumpkin. So we can very easily fix this. Select the mouth. I have everything on separate layers. So over here on the right toolbar, you have your layers, and that's the first option. It looks like two pages stacked on top of each other. This layer has everything in it. As you can see, I have not named them. Name your layers. It is so much more helpful when you name your layers. So to name your layers, you just slide to the left, click the T with the edit pencil on it, and then you can just rename it. There we go. Press OK. Mouth shadow, look at that. I'm gonna hide that. You can easily just hide or show your panels over here by just tapping. Tap once, it appears, tap, tap again, it disappears. So very, very similar to the Photoshop on the iPad that we had, very similar in that program too. Now we want to fix these rounded points and make them into um, sharp points. So let's go over here to our left toolbar, click that, it's a, I'm pretty sure it's a, considered the white direct selection tool, but it's a selection tool that allows you to select vector points. So that is what we chose. Now, instead of having to go in here and 
select your handles and move them all around and make them like exactly exactly as you want them they made it a lot easier you just select your point and then you see this quick selection toolbar that's down here underneath the shape there's one that allows you to have a corner endpoint here you just tap that and it creates the corner for you it did move it but that's okay we can just click and drag it over now this one same thing so you just tap that corner point button I'm just gonna move it a little bit wider and then you can do the same thing to the layer beneath or let's just delete this one under the quick selection toolbar that's underneath the shape just press the little trash can deletes it I'm gonna select that mouth that we just transformed and you see these two pages that has a plus sign on the top one click that and it duplicates the shape now it may not look like it did anything but in the layers panel you will see that it actually duplicated the shape press this you see this circle guide here i think it's called a focal point not entirely sure what they call it i'll probably insert it over here but um you hold that down it constrains the proportions when you want to resize something so we still can't really see it change its color by tapping the color over here to the left on the toolbar. We're gonna match the color that we have up here for the innards of the eyes. Innards of the eyes, wow, what a, what a phrase. There we go, I'm gonna set it in there and then you can zoom in really close as well. Remember your two finger pinch to, not pinch, the, the opposite way. And you can get in really close and make those adjustments as you wish. He's looking pretty good. Fix this point here because it's not where I want it to be. That second selection tool, the point selection tool is what I'm calling it. You can tap any point you want and drag it exactly where you need it. And then this point down here as well. Now, if your path has too many points to it, for instance, you wanted to get rid of excess points, let's say that this had an extra point here that you don't need, choose that second selection tool, the point selection tool, and you see this under the quick action toolbar, little icon next to the trash icon that has an X through it. Just make sure your point is selected that you want to get rid of. Press that X, it does not break your lines and it keeps the shape together. That way you don't have a broken shape, which I find to be the most helpful thing. Uh, I wanna do one more gradient. So let's choose his body. And what we're gonna do is choose the color, fill color over here to the left. They do have an option for a freeform gradient, but I think I'll save that later. The freeform gradient is pretty handy if you have a lot of light and shadow going on, but I wanna keep it pretty simple. So let's just do a linear gradient. I'm gonna do it on an angle by clicking and dragging the one color point and the opposite. I'm gonna add a second point in here. So second point, third point, one in the middle by just tapping on the line anywhere. So that adds points to your gradient options, which is very, very handy. So but you can also add more points as need be. Your gradients can also be a lot more complex than this. It really depends on what you're doing, but I'm keeping it pretty simple today. There he is. To group everything, let's say you wanted to select something and group it all together. For instance, the pumpkin. Choose the regular selection tool, click anywhere outside of the artboard, click and drag with your pencil, and then you can press this little page here. And it's over here on the right toolbar as well. It's the seventh one down. If you tap that, you can see all your object options. And without utilizing the quick selection panel, let's just go over here to the right panel. And then you see where it has the word group. You just click group and it groups them all together. It's very, very simple. So they make this pretty easy to use. We just went through how to fix points, move points, apply gradients, and apply radial gradients. Now that we have our two objects, you see over here on the right toolbar how there is a your repeat icon, and then there are three different types of repeating elements you can do. There is radial, which is brand new. There's grid, we all know grid, and then there's mirror. Select both of these objects by clicking outside the artboard and dragging until you have them both selected. Click on that repeat icon, and we're gonna do a grid repeat. I'll do a radial one in just a second. Okay, so here is our grid. There's lots of different options. As you can see, it filled up the artboard, which is totally fine. So if you wanted to create a fall pattern, which is what we're doing, 
this is a very, very easy way to do it. Pull any one of these handles and you can see how it kind of just carousels through, which I find extremely handy. You can also change the spacing in between each item. And there's also handles here that you can reveal more or less. Let's go ahead and change up the spacing here, make it a little bit wider. There we go. Let's move the whole thing. There we go. I'm going to make a few repeating lines here. Let's just do the whole artboard, shall we? Now what you can do for the grid, you can go into your properties selections. Now I haven't shown you properties selections yet, so it's going to be that second icon that looks like sliders. It's going to be right under your layers icon. So it's the second icon on the right toolbar. Scroll down with your pencil. There is a whole bunch of options under the grid repeat section, which is at the bottom of your properties panel. Under the grid type, you can choose many different ones. So instead of having to take an object, repeat it, and then have to take another object and then repeat it and try to get it precise, you know how you used to have to do that? You don't have to do that anymore because you can just I think it's called bricklay and they can stagger themselves and you have an instant pattern. You can also flip a row. You can flip it the other way. You can flip a whole column. There's a lot more ease of use with the grid repeat options. I personally like it looking like this. So I'm going to save that and leave that there. Let's go ahead and zoom in to my secondary artboard over here. I have a cute little ghost. He's all by himself, so I'm going to select him. I used the brush tool to create him and all your brush options. Your brush tool is the fourth one down on the left toolbar. All your brush options are down here. So you can have your size of your brush down here. That's for the number point. You can choose the brush smoothness right below that. I like to keep it around six for myself. And then there are options for the brush settings. You can choose the angle that you want it. You can really do some really customized brush options there, which I find amazing. He's already grouped together. So we're going to do an object repeat of radial. Let's choose that radial repeat. And whoa, this saves so much time, especially if you ever wanted to create laurels or wreath patterns and stuff like that. It just saved you so much time. You may think that this is a lot of ghosts. Granted, it probably is. You see this slider over here to the right? You can increase how many you want or decrease how many you want that's in a pattern. That looks pretty good. You can also choose these sliders here and you can make some disappear. Like if you only want half of the radial repeat, you can do that. I'm gonna keep it whole just for personal preference. There we go. Now you see this dot over here? that's always the opposite of the handles. This one does this, so it allows your objects to move. This is definitely something new. I kind of want them to, let's see, I kind of like them doing that. There we go. So that looks really, really cute. You can make this a lot more intricate if you so wish. Instead of breaking this one up, what I'm going to do is press that duplicate from the quick action toolbar is what they call it. Decrease the size of this one. So how you do that, again, hold down this focal point here, this little circle down here, and then you tap one of the edges and then you just push it in. I actually made him a little too small, let's do that. And then I'm gonna bring this one in the opposite direction. There is a few other options in this quick action toolbar that I haven't explained. Duplicate that top one, make him way bigger. And to send him to the back, there is an arrangement here. You can, of course, go to your layers panel and switch up the arrangement if you wish. But if you don't wanna have to do that, you see where it has the two blank pages with the dark page in the middle? You just tap that, and then you can send that all the way to the back by just pushing the slider. So you can see how you can make some complex patterns and you can go ahead and mess with this however you like. For instance, you wanted them not to be stacked on top of each other. It's very simple to do that. Let's just hide these two. Let's grab this bottom one. Let's increase the size of it. And then we'll also move them apart from each other like so. And we can continue to mess with this however we wish to. And you can make some really funky fun patterns with that. Now, let's say you wanted to create a card. We're gonna do like a fun fall card. Try saying that six times fast. First, we're gonna create a new layer by clicking that plus sign in the top right. Then we'll select our shape tool, double tap, and you, I'm going to choose the square or rectangle tool. 
click and drag over the artboard until it fills the artboard. There we go. And then we can deselect by tapping anywhere outside of the artboard. So this is going to be our fall card. Let me just name my layers. All right, and this is where we're going to be working in. Let's hide that layers panel just by tapping on the icon. Very, very easy. I'm gonna zoom out here. I have fall leaf over here that I took from earlier. I'm gonna duplicate it so that we have it. In order to move objects from one layer to another, let's say you chose the wrong layer. Let's say if this maple leaf was in the fall pattern layer and you didn't want it there, select the object, click and drag it, Make sure that the layer that you want to move it to is stepped down to expand the layer. And then you can click and drag it into the expanded layer that you want it to be on. For instance, the card. And I'm gonna hide that layers panel. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. Our maple leaf is way too big. Resize it. I'm gonna move it to the center here and we're going to apply a radial gradient once again. I really do enjoy this radial gradient. Let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you what it did. Now this really looks kind of like a crown. We want it to look more like a whorl. Take this handle and I'm going to do half. I'm going to increase the number and we're just going to move them a little bit. Maybe I'll decrease the number slightly and I'll just move them. Let's increase the number now. And that looks like a really cute fall laurel here. All right, that's one. Duplicate it by pressing that plus page right here on the quick action toolbar. And then we're going to go to the alignment. Now the alignment tool is all the way down underneath the scissors. It's going to be your sixth option on the right toolbar. And there is a section down here that says flip. So we're just gonna horizontal flip it. It's gonna be that second option there. Okay, if you have issues like me selecting things, that you don't want to select, open the layers panel and press that little lock icon and it just, it locks the things so in place that we don't accidentally select them. Go ahead and move that other laurel over here. And now we're going to put in some text. Your text tool or your type tool is over here on the left toolbar right here signified by the T. So you can just click anywhere. I typically like to click and drag and it comes up with your very typical lorem ipsum tech. Double tap, and I'm just gonna type in hello fall, why not? In order to, let's double tap in there. In the properties panel, you have a section labeled text. So here you can choose any font you wish by clicking on the fonts. Scroll through and pick whatever you choose. There is a lot in here that's already defaulted for you. I really like this lemongrass one to be honest, but if you see down here, there's a selection for more fonts. This allows you, if you have a CC account, to access all fonts from Adobe fonts. Like, it's a lot. The Adobe stock fonts are all in here. You can browse by any kind of style or any kind of tags that you wish. Ooh, modish regular. That looks really cute, doesn't it? All right, let's, let's go with that one. In your quick action toolbar here, there is an option to resize the text to make it bigger. It's these two T icons right here. Let's go ahead and change the color of it. Voila, and you have your text. So we created a bunch of different grids, radial repeat, grid repeat. We've done some laurels, we've done some patterns, and we even messed a lot around with type, color, gradients everything. For me, this is very, very easy to use. It's very quick. It makes things a lot easier. And I can't wait to review the new updated desktop versions. Go ahead and click subscribe. If you like this video, give it a like to let me know that you liked it. And I will see you all in the next one.